If you want a chance to win this anti-tank grenade, all you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Like the video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, comment on this video, and next week I'll be giving one of these away completely free of charge. On with the episode. Just taking apart this mock. Oh, hey guys. Um, yeah, I'm taking apart the Battle of Sinai, and we're actually going to um, put this mock series on pause, and we're actually going to do a Call of Duty Infinite Warfare mock. So, yeah, expect new episodes every Sunday. I'm just kidding with you guys. We have to take all these parts off the mock here, or at least these ones by the train tracks, because I'm trying to figure out how I can lay down this track properly, and I have to get rid of some of these pieces, but... We're still doing Battlefield 1 Sinai Desert, don't worry, that was just a joke. I just find it funny how Infinite Warfare ratings are down, and Battlefield 1 is just kicking butt as far as ratings go. Alright, more updates coming up. Okay, so most of this episode is going to be filmed throughout the process of me building um, building up the mock for this week's episode. And I think this week's episode is episode 12, if I might be mistaken. But basically, I was able to get the track down, at least from what I can visually see. You know, it's kind of hard to press this down hard enough on these tables that are that, um, they flex a lot, especially in the middle. So it's hard to really push them down and get the studs to connect. But I got it down, so I need a rebuild like I was showing you guys. Um, I have all these pieces that I had to take off the sides and whatnot. But basically what I've been doing now is now i got to fill in. Um, there's a 2x4 stud section in between each railroad tie. And that goes all the way down the mock, as you can see. So what I'm having to do is I have a bunch of 1x2 tan plates. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking four of them. And I'm putting them in this um, 2x4 gap just so it looks tan because as you can see there's white showing because I use those white plates because white plates are cheaper than tan plates so what I'm doing is I'm filling these up with tan now I'm thinking right because I put these dark tan one by ones to add a little bit more color and uh, just make it look a little more detailed I was thinking I might want to do that in some of these just to kind of make it instead of being all tan like this and it seems too uniform to me but what I was thinking is we're going to have an armored train on this track. So a lot of this, you're not even going to see if the train, you know, is like sitting over it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to fill them all with 10 one by twos. And the reason is because I found my snippers here that if I gently just grab the side or the stud, I can pull them out. And if I really wanted to, I could go back and put some detailing pieces in if I needed to. So I'm gonna do that. That was just a cool little trick I found. So I'm not damaging the plates. I'm simply just kind of plucking them out of there. So if I want to, I can go back and add some more detail. Okay, so this is the problem I keep running into. You see the train track here? If I try to push it down, okay, now it's seated as you can see right there. And I lift up, it just wants to pop up. So I'm trying to figure out how to keep it down because this is really being a huge issue right now. Alright guys, I told you I would get to, there's this point back here, you can't see it, but back here, I got all this railroad done, and I actually got the railroad, or some of the railroad pieces in, I got these tiles in, these one by one reddish brown tiles, I got all, I think it was like 200 of them, and the whole stretch, I'll show you in a second, of this railroad, now has these one by one tiles, but I'm still waiting on the order for the one by four, so only like up to here have the one by fours, but this is kind of what it'll look like. Definitely glad I chose reddish brown versus dark brown. We had that poll a couple weekends, or uh, I think it was episode eight. We had that poll talking about if this should be reddish brown or dark brown, and you guys chose reddish brown, and I have to agree with you. I think it looks way better. Also, I just thought this was kind of cool. I ordered those one by one tiles, and I only had three extra, so that's how you shop smart, is you actually do the math and figure out how many you need. Also, I hope you guys enjoy this, and I want you guys to take this pull up here. Let me know what this, or how this looks to you. Do you like the way I did the slope, kind of the mound, and then put the track on, and then I did the reddish, or not the reddish brown, the dark tan, um, one by one plates that kind of make it look like ruffled up dirt, 
and to add some more detail. And then if we take the camera and look all the way down, all of these, it might be kind of hard to see, but all of these have the reddish brown tiles on them. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at. It looks really weird now, but picture it like this all the way down with an armor train on it and it'll just be awesome so make sure you guys take that poll let me know what you guys think of this in the comments and let's keep going on okay guys next up on the agenda i wanted to talk about the town that we're going to be putting back here if you remember the drawing the drawing is actually off to the side i'm not going to show you but we're going to be putting some houses here i'm thinking four or five of them and if you've ever played battlefield one or especially on the map of the sinai desert you know there's all those white houses that are made of like a white concrete or clay i don't know what the material is but we'll be making them white and that'll make a really good contrast against the sand color or the tan so my question to you guys is if you kind of remember that map in battlefield it's actually elevated um the hills or i guess the town is on like a hill and like i talked about this that's going to take up a lot of tan plates and a lot of filler brick now my question is do you think i even need to elevate this do you think i could just do it on this same level you know just tan plate it um, just like this same level, you know, one brick, one plate, all over here, and just build the town right on top of it? Or do you think it's necessary for me to build up a mound? And I did a little test down here of what I was thinking could work. Now, instead of elevating it like, you know, three or four bricks high, which would take up obviously three times as much bricks, I'm thinking, what if I just did, I covered all of this in white plates, then did one brick, then a tan plate? Now, then I would merge it, you know, like this, so it look all nice and whatnot. And uh, I, I could do, um, it's kind of like the Battle of Palilu where I did that transition from the beach up to the main level. It would be this type of sloping, you know, all the way around. Let me know what you guys think. Take this poll here. All I have to do is click that card. Do you think I should elevate it like this? Or do you think I should just leave it at this ground level? Let me know in that poll. That'd be much appreciated. Let's keep moving on. All right guys, if you remember from last week, we had finished this AA gun and a viewer actually sent me the designs to this. I talked to him over Facebook between last week's episode and this week's episode. And I asked him, hey, would you be willing to let me use the same design and make them as kits that you guys can buy on my website? He was totally fine with it. And um, we're gonna be making these kits. Now, I don't know when these kits will come out, probably not until 2017 just because I'm working on another kit that I'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in buying this little AA gun. I would custom paint the shroud and the barrel a gold color to make it look like brass, like in real life and in the video game Battlefield 1. And uh, I'm thinking if I can get all these parts, I should be able to sell the kit retail for five to $10. And I think that'd be worth it. And I might even do like a battle pack, like one of these in a figure for maybe 20 or something. So that's just an idea I'm throwing around in my head. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd be interested. And why not take this poll and uh, let me know. I don't know if I'll be able to do this many polls because I've already done, this would be the third one. But uh, if there's no poll up there, just let me know in the comments down below. Let's keep moving on. All right, guys, let's talk about the World War I Rolls Royce armored car that my friend Elliot designed and I'm gonna be making into a custom kit. So I talked about this for a while. A lot of you guys have commented and wanted me to make this a custom kit that you can buy on my website. And I finally ordered all the parts. I'm working on instructions with a buddy of mine and we should be able to get this hopefully up before Christmas. I'll be making a batch of 50 of them in dark bluish gray. Now we can't make them in tan simply because of the cost and also Lego doesn't make this um, 4x4 dish in tan which is kind of an important piece it's the main turret but uh, i'll be making 50 of them i already have pre-sold i think 10 to resellers so there's going to be 40 available so i'll let you know when they're up on the website there'll be a separate video on the channel talking about that but i just want to give you guys a heads up this is kind of the prototype version the reason it fell over is because i don't have um the right tires on the back i only have I have like the one good side, so that's kind of what it will look like. It will have the spare tires on the side doors. Um, Elliot added that at BrickCon, and we thought it looked really good. But uh, yeah, it will come with the little stickers, and this will also have some printing. These boxes will have like ammo printing. It'll have some cool markings on the side doors and whatnot. So this is, like I said, prototype version, but it's gonna be 
Hopefully, I'm thinking $40 to $50 if possible. It might be cheaper, it might be more. Highly doubt it would be more, but uh, just look out for that, and I'll keep you guys posted on this armored car vehicle. All right, guys, so we're going to pick the giveaway winners for episode 10 and 11. I forgot to do episode 10. I got so, you know, um, busy, I guess, with editing the video, I just totally forgot. So let's do this. One, two, three. Boom. Fallout Gamer 2255. And all you have to do, personal message me here on YouTube, and we can work out this little giveaway. And then for episode 11, let's do this. One, two, three. Boom. Steinbach. The mock is looking great so far. Keep up the good work. Once again, all you have to do, personal message me here on YouTube, and we can work out the giveaway. And one thing I wanted to let you guys know, that's a 752 likes. Now, I told you guys that if we got to 1,000, I'd give away two anti-tank grenades. We didn't get that, but we got very close. So let me know, and I think we could get to 1,000 on this. So we are so close, 750, that is insane. So let's try to get to 1,000 this week's episode. Right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's episode, episode 12. Thank you for watching, guys. All I can say is, I'm really, you know, stoked as far as how this train track's coming out. It's definitely gonna be interesting when we get the armored train designs kind of prototyped and whatnot. Make sure you guys take all those polls that I talked about throughout the episode. That'll help me out, you know, decide some really key things for the building of this mock. And uh, overall, thank you guys for the support. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and you'll have a chance to win that anti-tank grenade. Other than that, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you click here to subscribe and check out last week's episode here. Check out another video here. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.